Does anybody have brief questions before we move on for Dr. Johnson? Yeah, I was just wondering why you wouldn't uh, go ahead and open it before you examine the inside of x rays. Uh, what, what could potentially be in there? That would be in I'm sorry. The, 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 what, what might be in there that, that you wouldn't want to uh, have out of uh, the gene? <laughs> Why not open? Rather than I, can't, all the I haven't had any wishes, so I, I don't know. Uh, but what you're asking is what we thought we might find in there when we opened it? Or yeah, why not open it right away? Like, why not open it right away? Uh, the reason I did not want to open it right away was simply because, first of all, I didn't know what was in it. And, you know, in trying to peel this away, I didn't, I didn't want to just disturb or destroy anything that was in there offhand. And when you've got the tools, the diagnostic tools to be able to give us that glimpse, what you know, you know we say in archaeology, slow down. <laughs> We're all anxious to see it and want to know it. But let's just slow down, do it right, and make sure that there, now as it turns out, you know, there probably wasn't anything of the, in terms of the preservation of wood or, or other objects that might have been. But uh, no, you want to do it right, and you're only going to do it once and so on. Let's be sure before we go in. All right, guys, let's move on to the second section just because we want to take the time. Thank you very much. Clearly, now we're going to try and focus down on what exactly happened uh, with those trees uh, that have fallen and then um, what we we're able to tell you here with some preliminary results. We're still doing our analysis, but it seems appropriate that today is a good day to uh, kind of go over what we know uh, So I'm going to ask once again for Dr. Valentoni to come up and kind of uh, give a very brief rehash for those who weren't here. Well, what we got, and then we'll run into the artifacts, and then we'll move into the bones and stuff. They keep calling me up here. I'm trying to keep <laughs> 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 Oh, so. so just go over here. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's just help me out here. Oh. And that's the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The short version is just to acknowledge to the audience. Oh, well, short we're going to go back to, to, to what we did here. Yeah. So we, we went in. You can tell we didn't rehearse this. So. <laughs> we went in, we were looking uh, through the material, things like that. Uh, I do bones and things like that. Nick is the expert on the artifact. So what we're going to do is the first thing we have to ask, obviously, is if you find bones anywhere, the very first thing you need to determine is exactly how old are these bones. So there's lots of dating techniques we could apply, but in this instance, we need the artifacts to tell us about how old these bones were relative. Right. Very good. Yeah, well, going back to our original excavations uh, and uh, recovery, we weren't just recovering uh, human remains. Uh, we were also recovering artifacts, some of which were uh, uh, funerary objects uh, and uh, parts of the coffins and so forth. And other materials had to do with 20th century trash. Material <laughs> just from the green. Well, one of the things we found were a whole series of brass tacks. Now, brass tacks were, were used on coffin lids often, and I'll give you, I'll show you an example to uh, list the individual's initials and usually age of death. Now, unfortunately, because of the decomposition of the wood and so forth, and because of the root map cutting through, we did not have them in any kind of a system where we could read, if you will. Um, and I'm going to just go across here. Uh, what we just got were individual uh, tacks, so we couldn't see the patterns of what we have. But this is from an, uh, a, a, a tomb site I worked on many, many years ago uh, in the town of Cheshire, uh, uh, excuse me, Colchester, and it was uh, the Buckley family tomb. Uh, and you can see this is the lid of one of the coffins, and classically what they did is they took small brass tacks, and they would hammer the initials of the individual lay here. In this case, it was a Mesa Buckley. Latin AE for age of 30. She died at 30 years of age in 1804. And then covered with a Christian uh, uh, sign of endearment with, with a, 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 a heart uh, as endearment. Now, not all of the burials are usually this black one, but almost all of them that were used it would be initials and age of death. This was really helpful to us when we did this particular project because we had the family genealogies and 
we were able to actually put names on individuals. In this case, we don't have the patterns, but this is a mortuary practice we see uh, on graves, typically from 1770 to about 1830. By the time you get to around 1830 or so, you start having um, the pattern of metal coffins. And then we start seeing nameplates put on, on coffins at that point. But uh, prior to the nameplates, they uh, used uh, brass tacks. Earlier uh, than the 1770s, uh, it basically, you know, it, it was the local carpenter that, that banged out the boxes. And, and in many cases, we have seen skeletons that are literally shrugged into their coffins and obviously not made to order in some respects. But basically, the local carpenter was just banging these out. But by the time you get into the, after the American uh, Revolution, when we start as a nation, the Industrial Revolution is really picking up. And now what we see is changes in, mor uh, in mortuary. And we see changes not only in tombstones that Judith mentioned, but we see it in the actual coffins themselves. And now it starts happening around the turn of the 19th century because you start getting uh, an individual who is now a professional, an undertaker, uh, a funeral director, who is now going to say, here's what we're going to give you. And then coffins become, with the Industrial Revolution, far more elaborate. You see hinges, you see glasses now put on the top so you can view the face without having to lift the whole board. So this is a, a technological uh, change in mortuary we see again after the American Revolution and into the early uh, um, 19th century. And of course we recovered coffin nails uh, uh, and also bits <coughs> of metal were showing up. Um, and we would associate that with the coffins too. I'm not exactly sure what those metals were. We're trying to take a look at them and clean them up. In some cases, they put hinges on the, on the top board, and the hinge would allow, again, you could open up to view the face without having to lift the whole board up, okay? So you see sometimes metal, metal hinges, but nails, there were no signs of handles or anything like that. Uh, and these were not peak coffins, okay? These were, these were uh, most likely flat coffins on, on the top. So just to show you some of the artifacts that were recovered, we also found a clay marble. And this becomes very interesting because of all non-coffin uh, hardware that we found, the other kinds of artifacts that were associated in there, they were basically 20th century, and basically 20th century trash. But this marble, was at the base of the barrel uh, that held the monument. Bob showed you those photographs of it. Um, and remember when he showed you, I found some bone still embedded on the base of that monument. Well, there was also this marble baked and based on it. And this is a classic clay marble uh, that would again be of the same time period of the coffins, okay, the 1770s to early uh, 19th century. Uh, and so the question became, it's associated, as uh, Gary will, will tell you uh, soon, uh, uh, with an individual as a three to four year old child. So the question becomes, is this a funerary object? Was this put in the grave? Because this is the only artifact that dates to that time period other than coffin. And, uh, and, and it may be possibly so. It's a bit unusual because in Judeo-Christian tradition, it's your soul that goes on. And when we do look at these, uh, uh, um, <coughs> we almost never see anything inside them other than, you, know, you can't take it with you. And so basically, it's, it's shroud pins that, that might have been used to hold the, uh, the, sh the sheet together during the funeral process. And, and certainly, uh, more hardware from the coffins. So this is kind of a unique uh, uh, thing. And, and I would say, in likelihood, that this probably was placed in the coffin simply because of the time period and the age is so consistent with uh, uh, the, the, the coffins themselves. So, again, uh, putting it into, remember what we Judah talked about, the history of, of the town uh, as we get into the late uh, 18th century or the 19th century. Um, this is where we could place these particular uh, graves, that they are probably about the time or post American Revolution. So now we'll open. Oh, we'll use our phone. Uh, Anthropology Department at Yale.